Morning, Tyrone. Young Hart, morning. Bouche, morning. Simon, morning. Okay, let me just start. Um, like uh, we know, my name is Mr. Pomolo Mahane. That's my Instagram. So, like yesterday, you know what we did. We spoke about input device and the input like we said uh, just a recap of what we did yesterday before i can start because we're just about to continue the same concept extended hardware concept then whereby we said a hardware is any physical component of a computer which you can be able to touch and see like i said the way in which these uh, hardwares are manufactured they are manufactured in such a way each can be able to fulfill each operation of the computer bin, uh, taking uh, input data and processing it and giving us the results. And then we store the results for the future use. Like yesterday, now we have learned more about the type of the input device that can be used to interact or enter the data into the computer system. Then today, as we are continuing about the same concept, I'll just like us to look over the objective of the lesson for today. Then here at the end of the lesson, I'm expecting you to know or understand the basic concept and features and use of what output, the output storage and processing devices now. And also know the different devices like what data projectors multi-function printers, the effects, storage device, and media. Like for example, CDs, DVD, and Blu-ray, and memory cards, so on and on. So all these, they fall under the storage devices and media. T also, you must learn how to take care of your PC system. And we must also understand what the processing. And then we know what is the processing because we said the most important thing about the computer is to take input data, since we know data is a raw facts figures that has no meaning, such that we can get an end products uh, called an information, because we said information is very important because normally, like for example, the era in which we are now living in is called the knowledge management era, is a building block of a knowledge because without uh, information, we cannot be able to have that knowledge because an uh, information brings an awareness and understanding to us so that it can be able to help us to make an informed decision. That is why then in computer science, we've got a term called, is an agronomic gigo, garbage in, garbage out. That is why it's very important to check whatever the quality of the information that you're entering in your system will give you what the desired output. Because if you are taking in the incorrect information and process it, therefore, finally, you must expect incorrect results. That means incorrect results can lead us, in in lead us to make what incorrect decision. That means incorrect decision can make, means failure for every endeavor that we take in life. Therefore, that is why it's very important to consider what the quality information. So what do you mean about the quality information? So the quality information is like, that's how we process the information. Like we know our information must be complete, accurate, no mistakes on it. And then so that at least like, for example, if we are uncertain whether the school reopen tomorrow, then we are not sure. That means that information is not complete. So we cannot be able to make a correct decision at that 
time because of the quality of the information that we have. So it must be complete and then it must be current. We should not rely on something that is outdated. So we must rely on the current thing. So that's how the quality information, these are the simple characteristics of the quality information. Okay, let me just start from today's chapter because that was just a recap of what we did yesterday about the inputs. And then the most important thing is all about processing of the information. So, okay, now I'm going to talk about the output devices. We spoke about the input, the output today and storage media and device and processing. So that's what we are going to cover for today. So let me just start here. Now that you uh, uh, now know what input and uh, input device are, can you name few output devices that you know? Because remember we said input is a process, is the action, and then output device, we are talking about an actual device that we use to accomplish that task of entering the data into computer system. But now today, we need to talk about the output device. Can someone just tell me what you understand about the output device? Good morning, everyone. Please remember to keep the chat relevant to this lesson. Okay, no, it's admin here. Yeah? If you, okay, thank you. So you can hear that message. Let's make sure that we all be compliant. Yeah, data projector is one of the output, the printer, correct? The headsets, the monitor, and uh, yes, you're all correct, guys. Like I said, remember when we talk about the information processing cycle. So that is the way in which now we process data. Then how do we start? We first enter the data through the input device and process it through the central processing unit. So by processing means you are manipulating. Because remember when we define data, we said we refer to the raw facts Figure symbol that has no meaning. That means we cannot make any sense out of data. That is why we need to organize it in such a way that it can reveal a meaning to us. Flash drives output process this. Come again, Leon Hart, what are you saying about the flash drives and output process data? Flash drives, it falls under the storage, guys. I'm going to talk about the storage here. So since now we all understand now what is output device basic concept about this output refer now remember we must be very careful about this we should be able to make a distinction between output like an input remember these are the processes but if you are saying output device you are talking about an actual hardware device that can be able to accomplish this action of outputting. Output refer to the feedback when the communication, communicating with the computer, that's what you get. The features, output device is a piece of hardware, like I said, that person used to get what? The results of input instructions. Because remember, the input we set is an actual action that we do. So, but how do we do this? Through the help of what? An output device, then we need a hardware, like I said, all of these hardware, they are manufactured in such a way each can be able to fulfill what a specific operation or a task of a computer. Like we normally know then we've got how many uh, operations of the computer? Computer input uh, data and then process it and produce the results. Then we can store the results. Then finally we can share. That is why we've got networks like these days we've got uh, the network application that we can be able to use to share the information among ourselves and the other members of the family, maybe around the world. Um, uses of this, uh, the use of an output device is get the processed result that is put into the computer. Exactly. Like for example, we know through the input, 
then we are entering the raw facts into the system, then the computer through the central processing units, then I'm going to elaborate more about the central processing units along the lesson. Then we know we have to process. By processing is like you are manipulating. So you are organizing it in such a way it can reveal what the meaning, since we said is raw facts, is an organized data that has no meaning. So when we manipulate now, we organize it such that it can be able to re reveal meaning to us. So that's all about. Then now we had, what is an audio output device? Because yesterday when we spoke about an input, then we had an audio input device. So same like I said here, then how do you get the results? Like remember a mic was a typical example of an audio device that can be used to pro enter your information into the system. Like if I'm speaking over the mic, for my audience to get my results, they will have to use what the speaker. Now, it is device that produce sounds like music and voice. Like for example, also something like a kita, those kind of the musical instruments also, they can be one of the audio output because whenever then you are playing that instruments, then you'll get that sound. So that is an output, that's the results of that as well. So, but the typical example is that one of the mic, like if I'm speaking to the large number of the audience through the microphone, then over the speaker, they can get my results. Okay. Like for example, headsets, they are just the main speakers. Headset is a speaker that is small enough to fit in your ear so that you only can uh, listen to the music. So the speaker can be plugged in your computer and you can listen to audio played by CDs or games, exactly. So this is a uh, end result of what you're playing there. So you'll get this in the form of what the audio, then you can only hear, but you cannot be able to see. So that's why we call it an audio output. Like the speaker will give you that sound. You can listen to the music through the speaker. And then also there's another output device as well. Yeah, someone, Say so you said an instrument called what? That's a kita. That's a kita that we have seen there on the illustration. Uh, that's kita, correctly and head. That's kita. Okay, the fax machine. The fax machine or fax mail is used to send information through telephone line from one fax machine to another. So therefore, the fax is an output device because when I send you can also use fax as both input and output because remember when you're fax then you need to scan no but yeah no it can't be fax can be so because it takes that uh, input through the scan then we scan that document we fax it immediately when you receive the fax mail then the hard copy of your fax is going to be printed on the fax machine that becomes the end results of your information. The Fox modem. Fox modem is a device connected to the computer. Then output can be sent through a telephone line to a fax machine and this device can connect to the internet as well. Uh, also here, uh, can someone tell me what is a modem? Because this weight modem is an acronym. Modem. Okay, can I see here? Can someone tell me, share with me, what do you understand about the acronym modem? Kamohelo, you said modem is wireless. No, no, yes, it can, but now I said this is an acronym. So modem means modulator, demodulator. Like I said, for example, what how information is presented on your computer is in the digital form then whenever then you are sending information, maybe from your computer to the other computer, your friends, maybe in America. So that information is going to be transmitted over the channel 
or the media. So then that becomes a signal. Then the purpose of the modem is to convert that digital signal into an analog, vice versa. Modem means modulate, demodulate. So that's the most important thing about that device, modem. Is the device that gives computer access to the internet by connecting it via USB that I can agree with you, but now I wanted just the full explanation of the way it is modulator, demodulator, that is correct. So modulate means convert digital signal into the analog one. So vice versa from other computer, then you demodulate back into digital from analog to digital. So that's how we use this device for. Now we've got multifunctional device here that can also uh, be an output device. And also yesterday we spoke about this as an input device where you can use what the functionality of effects embedded within this. That is why they are saying is multifunctional has got more tasks. This device consists of more than one function. For example, multifunctional printer, it can print and scan and copy and fax. Like we say, there are so many functionalities embedded within this single machine. That is why it's called multifunctional device. But here, because of the functionality of printing, because when you print, that means you can get your soft copy into a hard copy. So that's how we can get our results. So it becomes an output device in that instance. Then now let's talk about the another device here. So before I can go, uh, advise, device that converts computer output to a formal that can be sent over the telephone. Uh, that's modem, Leon had, yes, I can. Convert computers, what? I'll put you for my, then here, the modem, the modem, it converts the signal, by the way. You need to be more specific. When we talk about the modem, we know there's a signal. So we've got analog and digital signal for, that can be sent over the, tel for, come again, again here, what do you say? Um, device that convert computers outputs to a formal that can be sent over the telephone, but you need to be more specific. Um, when we talk about the modem, it must convert signal from one form to the other. Therefore, we know signal we've got only uh, that's digital and analog. Um, now, can I continue with an output device? Now, I'm going to talk about the data projector. Like we spoke about this yesterday, it connects to your computer and show everything that is on computer screen on the flat surface on the wall or the screen. The projector works with the lights, bulb and lens as well as the color filters. So these are the typical examples of the projectors. Like you see here, they are from different manufacturers. So in terms of the image quality then, so you can consider that when you buy the projector the pixels, the resolutions, those are the most important things that you have to check when you have to buy, when you have to buy the project or make a decision in terms of buying what any of this hardware device. Now we've got digital lights processing, that's project as well. This is another type of the projector. This type of the projector, it uses small mirror to reflect light. This projector has a better quality output than the data projector. Like I said, those are the most important things in terms of the resolutions of our images, whatever that you want to project. So we should just consider that as well. So those features are very important because you see in terms of the quality are not the same. So we check the specifications. Okay. Now, since I'm done with the output device, we know all these type of the output devices so far. In general, we know an output device, it conveys the results to a user. Like for example, what you see right now on my on your screen is an end results. So uh, like your monitor is giving you the results. So now let me just start. I'm going to talk more about the storage now because when we come back to the information processing cycle, like we said, then the computer does what? It accepts the input data into the computer then and it process it. 
then it produces this results like we've spoken about the input device we know them now then we did the output device then how does it conveys the results to us then also we need to store these results for the future use so that's why we are going to talk about the storage storage medium the basic concept storage refer to the permanent saving storing data and information storage device is a piece of hardware that per a person used to store or save results of input instructions. Can I see there's someone here? I shoot the message, just a minute. Okay, no problem. Leon Hart, yes, sir. Storing data is a critical part of any process involved in a computer. Yes, I agree with you. And like, remember your yeah, storage referred to the permanently saving or storing data and information. That's storage. Storage device. You must be very careful about this term. Storage, storage device. Input, output, output device, input device. So now we are talking about the storage. It referred to the permanent saving that is action, what we're doing. Now, storage device, we are talking about the piece of hardware that a person used to store or save the results of the input instruction. Uh, the use of a storage device like hard drive is to get the process results that were saved, like I said before. Through the information processing cycle, then I said input data, process it, produce the results, store them for the future, uh, use and then you can share that at later stage. Like I said, all this, they complement the actual computer operations. Like we know the typical operation of the computer is to input, process data and into the information. And then we store that for the future use and can later share it. Then now we share, how do we share this through the, uh, through the network. So a network is a connection of two or more devices through a dedicated link. Like we'll talk about that at later stage, not now. Okay, storage devices, we are continuing. We can use CDs and DVDs. These are used to distribute software and music. Like for example, some disc for software, then we do have them so stored on DVDs and uh, used to store the movies. There are so many things. Now, there's a carrying capacity of each storage device. Like for example, that CD, uh, it consists of how much the storing capacity? That's 700 megabytes. That means anything that is above that capacity cannot be able to be allocated on that storage device. Therefore, Terrace 700 megabytes. Uh, Terrace, again, you are saying is read only memory. Yes, like I said, these are the read only memories because why? They store data permanently. So the only way that we can be able to uh, define what the permanent storage is, then we can use what the secondary storage then it's, it's a non-volatile, yes, it's correct. The amount of the data on a storage device is measured in multiple of bytes. That's correct, Leon, here. Like that's amount of how we measure the carrying capacity of each of the device here. Like for example, DVD has got 8.5 gig of which is much more bigger than the CD. Blu-ray has got 50 gigabytes and more. So therefore, these are the carrying capacity of this. So we have to check the amount of the data or the information that we want to store on that particular storage media. So that is very important to consider what the carrying capacity. So like you can see here, this is a maximum capacity of each of these storage devices here. Then we've got optical drive. These are the drive that use laser light to read from and write to. Then also we've got a optical disc.
and then we've got optical disc and then portable storage so everything that is portable that means you can be able to carry it over and you as you walk around like your flash drive portable hard drives are replacing optical media this one they use laser light to read from and write to optical disc is an example of that so can i continue again with this one cds and dvd these are the most common way of storing and dvd are inexpensive and good quality movies and music can be stored on these storage medias blu-ray this disc have a massive storage capacity and can store up to 50 gig of data sorry for me spelling then now we know between the blu-ray and series which one has got more uh, carrying capacity so in terms of the storage then we know the blu-ray has got more uh, storage than this this is just a typical example of the sectors uh, that the the, the blu-ray structural uh, diagram for the blu-ray disc it's got the layers using the durable to coating so but nevertheless that much about this at the stage now let's talk about the memory device now so memory cards this device is found in a device such as what your camera smartphones and video camera this device can store data from what as big as eight megabytes but now nowadays guys then they've got more capacity than before since we know there's a law called the most law according to this technology everything each and every 18 months something new has to be updated so recently then we've got those kind of the uh, memory card that can have much more carrying capacity than this ones just connect the camera or device directly to the computer and copy the data from the card to the computer so that's what you can simply do but also recently then our laptop now they come with the slots they've got built-in slots that support all these devices now so now let's talk about how to care about your caring about your pc what can you do in your PC? Okay, caring for your PC. Then this is very important. Some of these uh, tips for caring for your PC, you'll find them in the lab rules. Keep magnetic source away from the computer. Keep dust free. That means you mustn't put it in dust because these things are the electronic area well ventilated that means there must be some aircons around like in most cases our lab computer labs they've got some air conditioners memory device and electronic storage media used in a small electronic vehicle. yes i agree with you keep dust free and don't drink liquids near computer and then don't eat over the keyboard all these things you should try to avoid them as then they can end up damaging your computer devices. Now I'm going to talk about the processing. Like you see, like I said, the computer is manufactured in such a way that each hardware device uh, can complement the functions or the operation of the computer like we spoke about the input we know we've got the input device the processing then we've got the processing device as a hardware as well then we've got output device that we just covered now then now we are going to put more emphasis on the processing device so can anyone just share with me what do you understand about processing I just want to see whether we still all together. Okay, can I see? That's one respond. Exactly. When you are done using the computer, cover it with a cloth so that dust does not affect the computer. That's correct, you're not. Yes, I agree. You can do that. But now let's share with share with me. What do you understand about the uh, processing processing what do you mean about it? cpu is the brain of the computer exactly end of percent 
because the brain that's where everything has been digested now we convert them then organize and do all these things exactly because even to make decision we use our brains to think so that's it's more like the brain of the computer the processing then we use a single device called central processing unit cpu we measure the speed in gigahertz of the cpu the bigger the size of the cpu the faster the processing will be then this is just a typical example of how central processing units looks like you'll see then you plug this into the socket of the motherboard. So we'll talk about this a motherboard. Why was it named after the word mother? It's so like we are celebrating Mother's Day just a day ago, then two days. And then we know mothers are always such important then they can. Working part of CP is very small PC of silicon containing billions of watt electronic circuit. So this uh, a CPU, for those who don't know how CPU looks like, this is a CPU. Then within CPU, we've got what is so-called arithmetic logic units and uh, control units. Like arithmetic, then we know we talk about the mathematical operations. Like when you calculate, you do the manipulation, then organization of your data, then that's how you control units, that means the flow of data from all these devices connected within what your system units someone say here yeah, is Dino uh, can I see your message Dino hello where is it now CPU send instruction to all the other components in the computer to certain function. These instructions are sent using what the keyboard. That's correct. From there, you input that is going direct into the random access memory, like I said, in between. So all these things are connected. Then I'm going to talk about that. The brain of the computer, which perform calculation and carrying out instructions. Exactly like I said, that we've got two units within this arithmetic logic units. That's the one that does what the calculations carrying out instructions we use what the control units from uh, input into the memory from memory into the processing so on and on so like we've got other type of the memories like cache then we'll spoke we'll speak about them at later stage that's how the mechanism works in the computer system also we're still continuing this is what we called the motherboard this is a motherboard here. Like I said, all is a matter because everything is attached to. So this case with components such as what we've got the motherboard here, the CPU, this is a CPU, the ROM here, this is your RAM, random access memory. So if you don't know what is a RAM, then it looks just like this. This is your central processing units. This is our motherboard here, but we don't have our ROM here, but we have seen ROMs when we are talking about the storage, now, the motherboard is the main circuit board. It contains the slots and the connectors. The motherboard connects to all the devices so that the device can communicate with each other. Like I said, the information has to be sent from one device to the other. So then, like in CPU, then we've got what? The control units. So that one, then it shows, we've got what is so-called the instruction uh, execution cycle. So then, is the one that is taking uh that is in charge of controlling the instructions like i see the main circuit board on the computer where the central processing unit and the random access are located that's correct that's motherboard 100 percent correct so those who don't know what is a motherboard this is a motherboard here these are the slots then our some of the devices like our a hard drive cables has to come here because whenever then you turn on your everything has to be read from here then like this slot comes what your central processing unit here here comes what your random access memory here then we've got all these other small devices here these are the connectors as well where all other 
external components will fit in here. That is why they call it the motherboard. Then we've got some expansion slots as well. So if you want to put other more uh, hardware devices like what your network interface card then can comes in here. So all these devices are attached to the motherboard. Then we've got all our ports in here. So AVGA, USB ports, then all these type of the ports are all found on the motherboard. So this is how the motherboard looks like. Then we've got a small watch in here. That's where it's called CMOS, Complementary Metal Oxide Semiconductor. So that's where all our BIOS instructions are stored in. So we'll talk about the BIOS at later stage. So then the CMOS, this is a CMOS, this watch that you see here. Okay. Central processing units. This is the brain of the computer where all the processing of the data take place. All calculation is done by CPU. So I think we all following and then we all understand. And then, like I said, I've emphasized this is how the CPU looks like. We are still sharing what the CPU is. Okay, can I just continue? Sorry, I've just keep, like I said here, we measure the speed of CPU in gigahertz per second. The speed of the CPU is measured in gigahertz. This is the number of what? Instruction that happens in one second. Like I said, from the RAM into the CPU, to the storage, so on and on. So those instructions, because remember, they come right from the input device into the memory because they have to be temporarily stored in there. Then they have to be queued uh, through the process so that we can be able to what, do what manipulation of that data. Uh, that's where we can do what, our calculations. Then we have got what the control units that now is going to control how the instructions. Like for example, now we've got the memory, like I said, all these instructions that you enter will temporarily be stored in a memory. So now the memory, random access memory. Where CPU keep all the data and instruction is working on it, like I said, RAM is volatile, or you can say is a temporary storage. And then RAM is supplied in module called DIMS fit into the slots on the motherboard, then you have seen this. Is a primary storage, is volatile, can only store instruction temporary that is why sometimes when you turn on the new program on your machine like you open your microsoft wait the blank one then you type and then when you you go to close when you close that document then you see an alert saying uh, save don't save cancel then if you say save then by default it's going to let you choose what the location that's when now you have to put it on the secondary storage from the primary to the secondary. So that means it was temporarily stored on your volatile memory because if you don't save, that means you'll never be able to retain the content of whatever the detail that you were typing on that document. So, you know, these days then it depends on you, but remember, no, no, no. Come again. Not 128 gig normal, but I, yes, I believe this one is for the big computers like server. Cause we've got server, then it depends. Like remember we've got a client computer and the server, then the server always 
must have uh, much more storage because of the carrying capacity then it accommodates so many people working remotely then so that is why server always must have much more storage than the normal computer that we call it a client computer and then these are the this is example of the ram so like i said ram is one of the storage is faster than the ROM. RAM is expensive. It costs more per gig than st storage. That means RAM is much more expensive than your read-only memory. The more RAM, the better the PC, the performance, exactly. Same as CPU. The higher, uh, the, the bigger the size, like 3.1 is much faster than 2.0 of uh, processing speed, exactly. So the same with RAM. The more RAM, the better the performance of the computer. So these are much more important things. Now let's talk about the ROM, read-only memory. This is a non-volatile storage device or the secondary storage or the permanent storage. This chip holds the instruction needed to start what the computer when you switch it on. So the chip is like a microscopic path of a conductor. This is what you see here. Like we've got so many kinds of the chips, some like um, the trackers, they just put the chip and then on that chip, then they can have the information that they can be able to uh, link it with your computer then so that you can be able to see whereabouts of this because of the data that we have here on the chip. ROM, this is a non-volatile storage. This chip store instruction data permanently. Like I said, um, now I think uh, it's time now for me to entertain the questions. Before then, let me just show you Then we've got an activity, that's 5.3. Uh, 5.3 of your book that I shared yesterday on the link, then this is a scenario here. They are saying the city has got an inkjet printer for the house. However, it is not working. No printing is taking place. It seems that there's no communication between the printer and the computer. Answer the following question regarding the scenario above. Which connector do printer usually have? Briefly explain why printer is an output device. List two advantage and two disadvantage of the printer that they said is that but explain one possible reason why the printer computer are not communicating okay i think Okay, guys. This is an end of our lesson for today. But now, like I said, I want to entertain the questions from your side. But I can just see people that ROM is a non-volatile storage space for permanent unchangeable data. Then can you please just try to elaborate more about what you mean about unchangeable data, Leon Hart? Okay. Can I copy the memory? 
So Ndogozo, you are asking the question, you are saying when a computer is a memory, the RAM of the computer. Yes, RAM is a memory. So it's a temporary storage, but like I said before, two types of the memories, what? Random access memory and the read-only memory. So now, then random access memory is a temporary storage. Like I said, when you run or you start a new program on your computer, then um, you type whatever that you want to type. Then when you click on exit, then you'll get an alert that shows that you must save your document or then you cancel and then or you don't save. That means if you don't save, then you'll never be able to retain whatever that you are typing on that particular document. So that's how RAM works. But so if you are saying save, then you'll have to choose what the location. That location, that means now from RAM, then you are storing it into read-only memory, then on the permanent storage so that whenever then you want it for the future use, then you can go direct to your uh, storage, then you can fetch it there and reopen it. Yes, yeah, someone, Dino is asking, sir, we connected to the server right now. Yes, right, we correct. Because remember, in computing, then we've got client and server computing. So a client uh, always makes a request. A server is a self-explanatory because like the word self means to provide, is a provider. In other words, is a host that can manage what the network resources. So what are the network resources? Is everything that we are sharing on the network right now. Like now I'm sharing the information with you. Like sometimes earlier, before we start the session, our admin just told you guys, you're not supposed to post anything that is irrelevant. So that means since she's a host, she's, she is able to remove you because she's got that capability of managing what the net re network resources. So, but you as an individual, you cannot be able to remove your friends here because you don't have those privileges. So the administrative privileges. And then we also connect to the server when we play online games exactly. So, because remember a server is a host that provides or governs what the network resources. So then if you are making a request as a client, you want to select a certain game, already that game maybe is stored on that particular server, then the server, maybe let's say for example, then it needs to authenticate you for the security reason. I spoke about this yesterday. Then you have to supply your username and password. If you are not a member, then you need to sign up so that they can create what your profile with your own credentials then whenever then you log, then if you supplied incorrect credentials, password and username that doesn't match your profile in the database, that means then you'll never be authorized. That process of authentication is going to alert you, please enter correct password or the username. So something like that. So that means, yes, everything is still on the server because server has got that uh, administrative task of managing what the network resources. That means from there, you'll never be able to access that particular application that you access remotely. That's correct. We are now on server. So Dogozo, I see you are only saying input data. I don't understand what you mean. Is that a question or Tiro, I believe I've answered your question. Come again, Ndogozo. Are you saying? Okay. Thank you, guys. Now we have reached the end of our lesson for today. So, uh, Dogozo, can I just uh, maybe respond to your question? In HTML, you could the input that uh, then I don't understand. Your question is very vague. Then I may I don't understand. Can you please just try to rephrase your question? Thank you, everyone, for joining us on the platform today. So see you tomorrow, same time, same place. Take care of yourself. Thank you.